Okay, on today's video, right into it, we're going to do a discussion, argument, debate video about Attack on Titan, Final Season, Part 2, 4.2, the chapters that are covered in that are 115 to 130. This is going to be a spoiler video, so we're going to be talking about the season, that, that, that one that just aired, previous seasons, but we won't be talking about content that hasn't been adapted by Studio Mapper yet, so the last nine chapters. So if you don't know what happens in the ending of Attack on Titan, that's fine. You can watch this video if you've watched the last season that just finished airing last week. So a theme that I noticed in this season was Zeke's euthanization versus Eren's revolution. It's a main plot driven theme, um, I guess. And so what is euthanization? Euthanization is they're, they're in real life, there's voluntary euthanization when someone has extreme pain and they can go somewhere and, and voluntarily decide to end their life. In the show, Zeke wants to eradicate, kill all of Eldia, all the people who are bloodline to uh, Ymir, who can turn into Titans to stop the 2,000-year war conflict. So that's his reason for doing that. And you could probably think, in some sense, Zeke's a bit of a pacifist eventually he wants to do this to ensure no more wars start whereas you have Aaron who he is doing this to ensure that his friends the people in LDR live a happy and peaceful life and he has gone to the dark side he's arguing is if he is evil now because he wants to destroy every other nation like Mali for this to occur so there's these you could say that they're both trying to come to peace for the world but in different ways and you could argue that they're they've both lost their humanity in the process i think in episode four or five there's a scene where zeke sees falco and colt and colt tells zeke that falco's ingested the the serum so if zeke yells he turns into a titan so falco turns into a titan but zeke's just you know he's like he's shocked by it and he just like he's just like fuck it he does it anyway and the result is porco and colt die in the process and falco becomes the new jaw titan then you have Eren after the rumbling starts where it it's it's debatable whether he has he doesn't have full control of the founding Titan, but he doesn't care that Eldians are getting eaten by the ones that are Titans now. So he doesn't have, he's not, he's not royal blood. So he, there's an argument whether he has control about that as well. So I've got a couple of people on Discord now and we're just going to talk about this. Do you want to introduce yourself first or should I? Uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you yeah. go first then. Um. Hi, I'm a JoJo fan. I like JoJo. <laughs> I like that manga. I'm kind of an yeah. elitist. Kind of quirky. Okay. Fair. So, and I'm Delta. Um, Delta again I'm, on the channel. Yeah. So <laughs> I've done a couple of videos with One Night King for on the deconstruction video, and the other one on fairy tale and um, response yeah. to Game Up, I think. Yeah, the deconstruction hopefully one isn't out yet, but it will be soon for Hunter Hunter. Oh yeah, and you know, hopefully I can make more videos with them later on since I enjoy talking with them quite a bit. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll keep doing that. Um, so what do you what do you think about this this topic? I think I think Attack on Titan took a well. I want to before I say actually anything is I actually haven't watched season four part two, but yeah, but you've yeah, read the, think, you've read the manga, so I read, it's I read the manga, can, but I won't, I won't say I won't say anything after chapter one thirty. I think or one thirty. Yeah, one thirty. I think yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, and um, yeah, I didn't read it, but I do want to say that I did check some of the animations for it, and um, the animation was very much improved upon. Compared to season four and part yeah. one, yeah, what Mappa did. Um, but I still think it's a far cry, and this is a very, it's a very controversial opinion. I think, and uh, other Mappa fans might get angry, but a far um, cry I, for the whole season that just aired. For season one, I think season one okay, was season a one, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Overall, it's good. But on the topic you're talking about about Zeke, uh, euthanasia, euthan euthanization, and Aaron's revolution, it's, they're very passionate about their beliefs. Yeah, right. Uh, and sometimes this passion is very blind. Because a lot of a lot of people that are on the internet, a lot of kids, you know, Generation Z years. Mm. Uh, I don't know if you're considered Generation Z, but personally for me, I am. Yeah, I, I think am, I'm yeah. I'm right at the end of Gen Y. Yeah. Oh, Gen Y, so the millennials yeah. then. Yeah. Um, I, I, it is it is a lot of with Generation Z, a lot of us, and maybe you as well, when I think because you would be part of the internet revolution. Yeah. The technology revolution that we encountered when we were very young. 
Um, and we would have gotten a lot of our political beliefs from, you know, online as well. A lot of young kids, there's a lot of people that, you know, some of them believe in, that are very passionate about capitalism, some of them are very passionate about communism, some of them are, you know, passionate about freedom, freedom of speech, some of them are passionate about, you know, restricting speech. Mm. Um, and, you know, it's the same with Zeke and Aaron as well. They're very passionate about their beliefs. Um, they're, you know, their past uh, defined who they were today um, in story, of course. And it can be very dangerous. It can be very productive. It depends on, you know, what's, you know, what the current situation is and what, uh, what the proposed solutions are. And uh, I think, um, you know, Zeke and Aaron are very passionate. That's good reflection on, you know, ourselves as well. And some people might relate to that or they may be very disgusted by that because of their relation to it. Uh, if, I want to give them my willpower. Too. Probably oh yeah, Aaron absolutely. Specifically, oh absolutely. Yeah, um, I want to I want to give the mic to Jojo Pen since I said my piece for the introduction. Yeah, All right. Um, I mean, what I took away from the season with the Zeke and Uization versus Aaron's resolution was like they kind of justified doing this because like I don't know they it's like they're like really pat they're kind of blindsided by it and it's kind of stupid because like when you become unblindsided by that and you look look around like everybody around you you start to realize that like you know you're not like you're not anyone super in control you're, you know you know you believe heavily but it's like they're just beliefs hmm. and i feel like they take it too far like i don't know personally if i was a person that was live in that world and ezekiel just said hey um i'm gonna like kill everybody so suck it i'd be like hey um no i like, kind of want to live <laughs> yeah. yeah i kind of want to live dude um no and looking at eric saying it's like yeah you know fuck all the other people who aren't like my race uh, yeah they're mean, fuck them. But at the same mm. time, I don't think they super hate. I know one does. The uh, what is it called? Fucking Marlins. Yeah, the Marlins. Yeah. They fucking hate the fucking what is it called? But like the paradox. Paradox. Yeah. And I, I, all the other kingdoms. Like, like, what, what are the other kingdoms? There's like I think four or three. There's the <laughs> Azumabito, the Asian race, and yeah. yeah. There's there's a character called On Donkapov who's with y- Yelena. Um, there's an African American race that we don't really see in the series. I, I feel like, I feel like they don't deserve to die. Yeah, because there's also like- there's a there's a faction that starts after the the Mali invasion of Paradise Island starts, where they're kind of looking to just for peace, like a a neutral resolution with the Survey Corps and the Mali like Titan users and Commander McGaff like joining together to try and stop Eren. So you have like you start off with Mali and then Eren and Zeke and the Jaegerus and kind of the Survey Corps like arm and are floating in there. But once like Eren betrayal is Zeke, these factions kind of split in a sense. Yeah. Um, well, just... It's it's very reminiscent of our daily political problems that many people, not us specifically, but many people face in third world countries. Mm. Um, you know, we have, you have several factions and, you know, you have several factions that are, you know, part of one group example, um, the USSR when they invaded Afghanistan, um, they've uh, the the Taliban or the so-called um, the people the people who are for Afghanistan wanted to fight against the rise of communism. We're not considered the Taliban back then, but uh, Afghan operatives who would fight against uh, socialists, right? And uh, right, and you would have Pakistan backing them with troops and all, and then you would have America backing them with weapons, which shows the yeah. one of the weapons arms, you know, international business. And then years later, you see that the Taliban is against America, um, and Russia withdrew, or the U.S. sort of withdrew after. Um, and you had several Afghan political leaders blaming Pakistan, which was another split. Um, so you, you had a you had, you had something sort of like that in Attack on Titan, where some groups are splitting off; they were defecting um, against each other. Like Aaron, yeah. uh, it was a no, it was a defection against uh, Zeke, or Zeke, and you know uh, and the Jaegerist joined Aaron. Flock well, yeah, well, leading the Jaegerist joined Aaron. Yeah, he left as well, and it was it was very uh, it was a it was a subversion, right? A lot of us didn't expect it. Um, personally, I could see it coming. I've read a lot of political stuff, so it was you know it, it, was, it was it was something that I could see coming. But uh, nonetheless, impressed me on the type of series that AOT did at the time um, mm. when I first read it. And I think that the, you, you enjoyed this part of the manga when you read it. Uh, I would say so relatively. Um, I do I do want to say that. Um, on what I think on if it, what's happening is bad or good. And I, I don't think it's easy to classify something as good or evil. Um, the typical cliche goes as there's no evil in war and there's no good in war, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and I think that very much stands true in what uh, Zeke or Aaron are trying to, you know, show their ideals for. Um, it's it's all a generalization. Uh, Zeke's euthanization is I don't want Eldians to suffer more, so I'm going to kill them out of you know pity and remorse. And this is the way that I'm going to do it, is through euthanization. Uh, and that would some of it might be voluntary, some of it might be involuntary. It would depend on the Eldian. And whereas Aaron wants to kill, you know several people um, that are not of paradise or Eldian descent. Uh, he is somebody who is plagued by nationalism and someone who values ethnicity over merit. And both people in some sense are blinded by the short-sightedness of their ideas and beliefs. Mm. And I don't necessarily think it's good or bad because, as I said, it's a very complicated issue. The, the good, I've, I've explained the bad of their ideas. I didn't talk about the good. Um, if Aaron achieves what he wanted to do, the Paradise or the Eldians are safe from harm. Whereas if Zeke succeeded, then, you know, Eldia wouldn't be getting hurt because they wouldn't exist. Um, and, you know, I think, I think a lot of them are very blinded by their ideals, as, as I said earlier. And it, Zeke's um, ideals kind of remind me of End of Evangelion. I won't spoil it, but, it, like, it seems please. Zeke, yeah. Oh. Um, Wait, how? Because I feel Zeke wants to like eradicate all of Eldia and to try and not spoil Ava. Um, I think because if Zeke there succeeded, was, there was a similar plan. There yeah, was similar a similar plan. plan. If, if Zeke succeeded, like just kill every Eldian ever in existence, including him, and so there'd be no one left, kind of like uh, small. Uh, Neon Genesis, end of Evangelion, spoiler now. Um, kind of like yeah, there's yeah, hardly just... there's hardly anyone at the end in Ava left. Right. Y'all it... yeah, turn it to Orange Phantom. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you should have put a spoiler tag on that. Uh, do put that in your description of the wine. Yeah, no, no, no. I'll, I'll, I'll put a, I'll put a, um, like a, Perfect. a note, like on the screen. It's fine. Perfect. Perfect. Um, um, uh, but back to what you were saying, it, it was very similar, I would say. I do I do think that a lot of the motivations are... I feel like there could have been a bit more fleshing out of the ideas because a lot of characters don't really face their hypocrisies. They don't face their self-righteousness. Um, I think the only way they face it is through other political groups. But then again, I think their closed-mindedness was probably the intent of Isayama, as many people are very closed-minded, especially in our generation of kids, especially in Generation Z and maybe, uh, you know, um, the millennials, yeah. Generation Y. And uh, it, it's the lack of understanding. It's, you know, it's prejudice. Um, a lot of people are prejudiced because they fear, uh, just like how the Marlins and the rest of the world fear paradise and their immense strength they showed back in their days of colonization um, of the other races. I I think that uh, while Isayama didn't really do a good job in the political sector, in terms of how one-sided it was, I do think that he he at least tried to made the reasoning for each character, like Aaron or Zeke, to have, you know, it's how it operates, their beliefs is very morally gray, I want to say. Do you despite mean... Them doing very, despite being, like, you know, morally black actions of just straight-out murder of several innocent people. Not all people are innocent in that scenario. Some people would be... It would be beneficial for them to die. Uh, but many of them are innocents. Do you mean one-sided as in everyone hates Paradise Island? Yes, because I find I find politics to be a very lucrative business. Why is right? that necessarily bad? Like, it's not that it's bad. It's just that I find it, it's one-sided, right? Uh, and I find it one-sided compared to our world. And while Attack on Titan is fiction, it's it's just... I find it that Isayama is trying, uh, trying to... You know, while despite, despite giving characters, you know, more degree actions, I find... The history behind it to be very one one sided, and being one sided isn't necessarily bad. It's it's it depends on the individual. I just think that it would make sense for uh, a group of elites, rich elites, to invest in Eldia's um in their success in their success of nature over Marley because it would be a very exploitive business. It would be a very rich and lucrative business for these rich elites, and everyone everyone just joining Marley, uh, pulling all their funds and money in. Uh, you're fueling one side for an easy victory, and I think a lot of virtually this would have benefited if they had sided with uh, Eldia or the Paradise people. Yeah. Um, 
for it. And I think the politics would have been much more believable. And I, I don't think that uh, Isayama would have to guilt trip his audience into, you know, liking Paradise. I mean, there's other reasons to like Paradise, such as, you know, Aaron's character development. A lot of people would have not seen that coming for, you know, the turns and the twists that Aaron's character gave out that impacted a lot of people. But for me, mm. uh, I think the history would have had to be much more before I sided with anyone on this complex issue. Okay. Uh, so going back to uh, that one talk about like nationalism like that, that really reminded me of this one part of Golden Kamui where um, Toshio uh, Hidikata was talking to the Manslayer about um, you know starting like an America right next to Japan so they could protect them against the foreign Russian foreign powers. Yeah, and I, and I thought it was interesting because that. Because, like, that's what, um, what, what's the other country called? It's fighting paradise? I forgot. Um, Maui. Yeah, it's kind of Marley's doing. They're trying to, like, invade yeah. paradise. Yeah. Which, you know, to get, like, air and like that, but still. And, I don't know. I just thought that was a really good comparison. Mm. Because, um, air reminds me a lot of, oh, well, I, get, not, I, don't, I don't think new air reminds me, but, like, air in back in, like, the third season mm. remind me a lot of, uh, Hijikata. Okay. Right. Hijikata was the old swordsman, right? Yeah. Yeah, um, I I can see that he's very nationalistic as well. Yeah. Um, he was very he was very uh, and Golden Cam is one of my favorite mangas of all time, and I think it's my favorite scene in altogether actually. And uh, he he is he is someone that is very nationalistic about his Japanese identity. Uh, so was Captain Sarumi as well of the the Japanese military. Um, and uh. I find that, uh, that I find some themes very similar, I guess, but I don't think Golden Kami outright has, you know, is overall similar to AOT. I think that Golden Kami is probably similar to JoJo, uh, especially Part 7, I would say, um, than uh, Attack on Titan. I think a better comparison to Attack on Titan would be uh, maybe Kogias, right? Um, oh, yeah. In uh, terms of how? Um, in terms of maybe the main character himself, he's rebelling against, like, the world. Yeah. Uh, it's a mecha series. Same with AOT. I consider AOT to be a mecha series. Uh, Mobile Suit Gundam. I consider Char Aznable to be very similar to Aaron. In fact, I would say Char Aznable is outright a better version of Aaron, in my opinion. But I won't go too deep into that because, okay. uh, yeah. And you know, Gundam is also a mecha as well. I, I say AOT is a you know mecha as well. And I don't know. It's just it just gives me that vibe as well. I think Golden Camry is just not outright similar. I would put it to JoJo as I said before. Um, yeah. you, you could say Evangelion is also very close to AOT as well. The closest in I would say is probably dystopia, both. kind of dystopia and like how the machines work, the mecha. Yeah, like they're very organic, like AOT's you know uh, titans are. Um, so I was thinking about like what you said about like um the fans like that, and I was thinking, oh yeah, they don't really connect that well, but I still connect them. And um, right, and yeah. I was thinking about like man, these are just serious topics, and then you look at Attack on Titan. Like I remember growing up with Attack on Titan fans. Being like, oh, this is a really cool show, and I'm really getting into this. And now, looking back, now it's like talking about super serious topics. That well, uh, it, we call this, I believe, a tone switch within or a theme switch hmm. within. It's very, it's very common. Um, I think it was very common in Hunter x Hunter, where the Chimera and Arc was doing quite a bit of cannibalism theme, cannibalistic themes. Um, how the ants were eating each other and whatnot, uh, and uh, Gaunt's descendants to villainy. Uh, for some people, might think that. That gone with the villain, right? Um, uh, yeah. A lot of people disagree, right? I, I think uh, my uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you go. My main concern about all of this was like, look at the AOT fandom though. It's right. like compared to like other like shows that have these tropes, um, like even Gillian, it's like super serious like that. So they go deep within it with like um, I don't know, Golden Conway. Not I guess because it's not very popular, but still, when you see people talk about it, it goes pretty deep in. Uh, Code Geass pretty deep. I, I think the most I hear about is politics, but I still hear about stuff like that. And I look at the Attack on Titan fandom, I think it's because it's new, but it just seems, like, it seems pretty, like, not really, like, taken very seriously. They're, like, really, like, bipolar with the stuff they do. Like, one minute they'll like it, and the next minute they're like, oh, my God, this is awful. I think the more yeah, popular think- series will get, the more the fandom kind of gets like that, like My Hero Academia, for example. Um, yeah, but My Hero was, like, and never, I don't think My Hero really goes over that, like, super deep stuff. Yeah, I I think we kind of did, but we would get too off topic if we talked about that, right? Yeah. Um, I would, I would just say on on the themes, like you yeah, could say so, that it starts as they're just fighting to survive, and it's really brutal, like the first season. Yeah. And you could say that's still that till like 
Mali's introduced, but then once that happens, it's really just who's going to like live live and survive at the end, destroy the other nations, like Eldia versus Mali. Yeah, no, yeah I can see that. I can I can agree with that. Um, it's 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 an echo chamber. It's said by a lot of people, so it's quite common within the beliefs of the community to think so. And then you get um, like the different like characters who want to save their world, but in their own different way, like Zeke and Aaron, and then Mali just wanting to destroy Eldia. You also have Armin as well, I believe, who wants to stop Aaron, right? Yeah. Um, and I think it's because he's, he's like the peaceful negotiator, right? Yeah, the um, diplomatic he, guy. The diplomatic guy, yeah, that's exactly the, I think that's an actual position in the UN. Mm. Uh, no, I don't know much about the UN. I'm very uh, far behind on it. Why don't you become but, a diplomat? No, uh, well, we can talk about that, you know, maybe some other time. But uh, it's okay. uh, it's Armin is just he, he's like the morally white person. I would say, like you know, killing is wrong. Uh, yeah, because you know, he, he I, I hates think it. That, like when when Connie kills Daz and Samuel. Remember, remember that scene? I'm actually very big on it, but it's, go on. It's where. The, the survey corps and Marley combination are going to the port to trick Flock, who's the leader of the Jaegerists for Aaron's army, to get the flying ship. So, like, Connie and Armin come in, like, like trying to trick Flock. Like, the the Marley people went out into the sea, so they need the boat to go. But then Flock realises that they're, they're just double-crossing them. And then the Daz and Samuels are... 104th survey corps squad members whatever back in the day and they get to the point where one of them shoots Armin but then he starts turning into titan form like just fossilizing with steam and then Connie literally just fights one of them off and grabs the gun kills I think Daz who had Armin at gunpoint and then kills Samuel just three shots to the head and it's really brutal because Connie and um, and both just like screaming and crying. It's it's like a huge scene. Like they don't they don't like killing, and they they probably still consider them friends. One of the lines that's brought up is um, what Bertolt said. And I think season two, it was um, you just do whatever you got to do to survive. Like he said something like that before him and Reiner turned Titan in season two, like when they had that reveal. Yeah, they, they absolutely, like, uh, I can see where you're coming from for the, they absolutely do value human life, uh, Connie and Armin. And, uh, it's been evident since, ever since Aaron and, and Historia were kidnapped first by Kenny's uh, military police when Armin was forced to kill that one uh, wagon rider um, that was trying to transport Aaron and Historia. Uh, you could see the fear in Armin's face when he had to do so. Uh, or when John said, Oh my God, we have to kill people when that happened. So they absolutely do value human life quite a bit. Um, and I think I think that uh, concludes what we have to say about the series as we're approaching the 30 minute mark. Yeah. Anything you want to say also about that, Jojo fan? Uh, I mean, throughout the season, I kind of saw Armin as like a morally good character. Yeah. I mean, like he he never had, his mom never died, unlike Aaron, so... Or his, yeah, his mom. So it was like, I always, I think because of that, he never became a super like, like ambitious person. He just wanted to survive, not have to kill people. You know, just live your life like good compared mm. to how Aaron was like, oh my God, my mom died. I'm going to get revenge. And this went, PTSD from it. Yeah. And then went on like a fucking, and then like worked his way up to where he is now. Like the fucking new fucking uh, Later, dictator. Uh, yeah. Dictator. Yeah. World. <laughs> or tyrant. I don't, I don't know what you could yeah. really call him. Like is it a uh, is it a dictator when like he's already in power? A dictator yeah. is a dictator is essentially just one person in power, has power and holds that power among the masses within the sovereign area. Um, oh, a tyrant? Or would you consider Aaron a tyrant or, or a dictator? Uh, I wouldn't consider him either. I just consider him just a genocidal maniac. I would say is what is. Yeah, but so it's Hitler. Hitler was as well. But you you can be a dictator and not kill anyone. That's true. Yeah. Um, those are very those are terms that are like very uh, complex, I would say, uh, and they're also very misconceived through the masses as well due to um, biases that happened in World War Two and World War One, previous wars before that. 
um, you know, such as the example you gave out Hitler was, you know, a dictator. And a lot of people think that, that think that dictators were inherently bad. Where you could look at the Tito from Serbia, who I think, who I believe was also a dictator, but also a socialist as well, who would, um, you know, try to help the economy out. And I think a lot of Serbians benefited from that. Whereas, you know, of course, some didn't benefit in some cases as well, right? But yeah, I think I think it covers all of it. Yeah, uh, actually, I got um, one last thing. What okay. do you both think of? the memories in this part of the season where oh, sure. b- before Gabby shoots, after Gabby shoots Aaron's head off, they're in the Ymir world, whatever, like where Aaron is chained up because he's not royal blood. And like, that's when Aaron betrays Zeke and like to stop the euthanization plan. What did you think of all the whole, like the memories of Aaron showing Zeke Grisha's past memories that it, he saw and kind of both of them like influencing the actions, kind of not changing the events, but helping influencing like Grisha kill the Reese family, for example. It, they, it, it kind of was the start to like Evan Aaron starting to revolution, revolution started betraying Zeke and going off and starting the rumbling, even the willpower for Aaron, like to convince, uh, to get Ymir to side with him when he, when he doesn't have royal blood. It found, it found a bit weird, like the whole memory thing in that, in that part. I thought it was trippy. Like, like think, really yeah. trippy. Yeah. I want to say, I, I want to say that it didn't really, it really took away a lot from its politics. For oh, yeah, true. That too. Um, I think it took away from its political and thematic value of it. Is that necessarily um, a bad thing though? Changing it's, up it's bad. It depends because it it makes it a very badass plot twist. Well, not badass, but like it's a very shocking plot twist, like a very shocking revelation. And uh, you're giving that up for like political themes. And I think um, Isayama was a character, but not a character, but an author who uh, someone who idolized plot twists. And I think he got that from the model of alternative hmm. uh, visual novel, which is confirmed to be, in, which con- is confirmed to have inspired Isayama as a writer. Which one? Uh, he himself is a Mug Love Alternative, M-U-V-L-U-V, and Alternative. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, it, there's a lot of plot twists in that, and uh, it's, I think Isayama was going for that as opposed to political themes, and um, I'm not very disappointed. I just find it underwhelming in terms of the political aspect. Mm. Uh, I mean, it, it, but, it, it kind of wrapped up everything, like, it wasn't like a, a time shift kind of yeah, it, it was, was also foreshadowed as well. Yeah. It was foreshadowed as well, so it was very, uh, it was very shocking. Um, and I think you see how I set up what he wanted to do. But yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, that's all my thoughts on this topic. That's nice. all mine as well. And I, yeah. I think that's all for Ludo fan as well. I believe. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Well, um, thanks, thanks so much for coming on, guys. No, um, thank you for having pleasure. me. Nah, always, yeah, always, mate. Every nice. time. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, we need Delta for all these like analytical topics you've been very good and jojo just gives it something more just like a bit more blunt probably to delta's personality i don't know so thanks guys for coming on thank you be real <laughs> well, cheers um so if you liked it if you came to the end you know give it a like give it a comment give it a share and just subscribe if you're new if you're down the end hit the cowbell to get notifications and just revive my channel from the the dead apocalypse of youtube channels as we're um doing more viral and seasonal anime content now. So thanks, guys. Have an awesome day.